God used that to, to bring it to our attention and strengthen her heart. To God be the glory. When we were in the right place at the right time, and he used that. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. It doesn't make sense at the time, but yes. God knows what he's doing. He Amen. brings it to pass. And, yes. 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 and we believe it will be a testimony to her. Encouragement yes. to her. It, it, it has been. It will have been a witness to her how God just took this and drew her close to him. Amen. And took care of her. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? He answers prayer. Yeah. Yeah, we do want to remember Greg this morning. He's Amen. had some difficulty sleeping, needs some rest. From all <laughs> you regulate, I'll give you rest. Amen. Anybody Amen. else? All right. For those out there on Facebook, YouTube, we love you. We're glad you tuned in with us. Stay tuned. God's got something. Fill us up today. Amen. 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 He wants to bless us. And we encourage all regulars out there, if you have a need, we agree with you for that need. Even though we were not together physically, the Lord brings us together in one accord. Amen. So we stand believing. So can we come to the Lord and pray now? Amen. You're welcome to stand if you want to. This is God's time. Father, we love you. We pray you. In this house, you've done, Lord. As our sister shared that testimony, you're working in the things that don't make sense. And you're bringing about your plan. And Lord, in these other needs. Lord, people and circumstances you care very much about. We trust you to meet these needs. It's long praise. We agree for these. Yes, Lord, we praise you and we thank you that we can uh, come before you today, the true and living God. We thank you that we found you, that we can worship you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch us, each one, that we will be witnesses for you everywhere we go so that other people can know about you, too, Lord. We pray now, now that you'll guide our service, that you'll be with us, bless our song service, bless our teachers, just bless every part of our service. Help it to be an honor to you, Lord. Just touch Nathan as he brings our message, anoint him and fill him with your spirit. All of our people, just touch us and all the worshipers, all of us worshipers. Help us this day to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. And we thank and we praise you. And we pray for Terry, whatever his needs are. Whatever he's spoken, I pray that you'll be with him and working it, Lord. You do, your hand is not shortened. You know what we need before we ask. And I pray for Tracy that you'll just touch her today, that you'll continue to heal her. She is better, and we thank you for that, Lord. And we pray that you'll take all the sickness out of her body. Just be with her, bless her, and take her out. We thank you for it, Lord. And for Elaine, we, pray, we Thank you, Lord, that she's with us today. We pray that you'll bless her family, that you'll be with Robert and Matthew. Lord, just bring them in, back into the fold, Lord, that they'll remember. You said that they would remember everything that they've been taught, and then they, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. I pray that you'll bring them back, Lord. Bring them back to you. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll just be with her boss, Michael, as he has a surgery touching, Lord, and help him. Help it to be a success, Lord, and touch him spiritually. And her best for you, we pray that you'll be with her. Just touch her and help her family, help her with all of her family problems. Just bless her, work in her family, touch them and guide them and help them, Lord. And also we pray, your Heavenly Father, for her co-worker having surgery. We pray that you'll be with her, that you'll touch her or him or whoever it is will need. Guide him and direct him, Lord, and help him have a touch from you, Lord. And we pray for these special unspoken requests, whatever it is, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you'll work in it, that you'll just bless her and help us to work out the right way for your kingdom, Lord. Just bless her and help it to work out. And we pray, your Heavenly Father, for everyone else who raised their hand, that you'll work in them, that you'll touch them, work among us. And we pray that every request, Lord. And Brother Bob, we pray. <coughs> A special prayer for him that you'll touch him from head to toe and that you'll give him strength, that you'll just touch him physically or work in him, Father, and help him. And we pray, thank you so much for Debbie for that she was in the right place at the right time, that she got the help that she needed. I thank you so much for, for them uh, being uh, attentive and giving her her this help and, and when she couldn't have money to be with her and touch her and raise her up completely so she'll have strength to go on. And also, Lord, that she'll feel your touch and she'll turn her heart to you completely. Be with her, Lord. And 
We pray for Greg, who's having difficulty sleeping. We pray that you'll work in him, Lord, that you'll just soothe his body and help him to be able to sleep. Work in him, Lord. I pray that you'll bless him and help him, Lord. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, again, you'll guide our service. We pray, Lord, you'll be with our brother and sister Christians all over the world. They can't worship you like we do because they're, uh, they could actually be killed for worshiping you. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with them and help them, Lord not to give up or go back on you. And also we pray for Israel. They're always in yes. trouble, Lord, because your people, the Lord, devil knows who yes. your people are, and we pray that you'll be with them and help them and strengthen them, help them to make good decisions. We pray that you'll just be with your people, Lord, and help them. And now again, we pray that you'll guide our service and help us, Lord. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. We did want to mention for those that uh, we want to say for the Woody family, we miss you today if you're watching us. Yes. And we do pray for them. God bless you and the Lord bless them as they travel in Jesus' name. And we also, for those who were here uh, last time, you know it was an eventful service and we celebrated the Lord's resurrection. Yes. And uh, the thing is, I want to say, when there's events that happen, we just keep on going. We yeah. had, had, we had a, uh, a motivated brother, we'll put it this way, to work on our speaker, and we appreciate Brother Gary's work on getting that speaker uh, up and going there, and uh, we had a, some pew troubles, appreciate Brother Al working on us here, helping us uh, get that pew fixed up, and it should be pretty sturdy, you know, if y'all didn't want to sit and not just say a minute, it'll be okay, sorry, man, yeah, it's, it's been tested out, ready to roll, so... But we did want to uh, encourage us today. We believe the Lord is going to move. We just keep on pushing, and he's got good things for us. Any birthdays or anniversaries today? Any birthdays? Anybody got something a nice April time? <coughs> no? All right. He is here in the house. Let's worship the Lord. Yes, he is. Give him praise. Miss Mika, you can take your crew whenever you're ready. God bless Miss Mika's crew. We're going to give the Lord praise. Everybody that wants to stand up and let's worship and praise the Lord this morning. Let's shout to the Lord. Amen. Give him glory and honor and praise. Amen.
trumpet could blow today, we could be in heaven before this day is out. You know, let's be ready. Let's be excited. I'm ready to see Jesus face to face. How about you? Glory to God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. If you're not ready, get ready. Amen. So you can travel on. It's going to be awesome. You can always be more ready. You can. There's always a, a place to go. Yeah. Can you give him glory in the house? Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The specials this morning. Very specials. I was not Appreciate the worship team. Appreciate the Lord Jesus. He is in the house. Yes. Yes. He is worth it. Saturday, Sunday, and we're looking forward. We will probably speak in the next week or two with us, and we'll put that out and, and just continue the planning process of that. And my brother back there running the sound for us, he uh, is our Holiday World coordinator, uh, yeah. and so we uh, we do take a trip to Holiday World every year, and if you do have interest in going, we do uh, encourage that. Uh, it's an awesome time, and so Aaron, if you can work on a date for us, we appreciate that and get a date together. Usually it's a Saturday. In May or June, we head out with a, a group to the park, and so we'll, we'll get you some more details on that later, but we did want to go ahead and start putting that out for folks uh, to see where the interest lies for folks to go. All right. He's here. Amen. 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 He wants to speak to us today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to start off here in, a, in the book of Acts. 
chapter 1. So we're going to dig into the Word without further ado. We're going to dig in and see what the Lord would say to us. I had a chance to greet everybody this morning, but again, we're glad you're here. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. We do want to encourage you. We the Lord's working here. He wants to take us further. And that's really what we're talking about today. Be filled. That's what I call this. Be filled. Jesus, right before he went up to heaven, we talked about last week on Easter, how that he rose, he's alive. And he, for 40 days, appeared to, to his disciples, to folks. And then when he got ready to go, he told the folks this. And so I just want to share just a little bit from my heart today and a little bit of testimony, a little bit of just digging in and see where the Lord takes us today. And so I'm going to read this, Sister Kay, just so you know, I'm going to read for one in verses uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, and Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. So we're going to read all that to open us up here. The Bible says this, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. In verse 5, For John, John the Baptist, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. When they had been filled with the Spirit, they wondered, what meaneth this, they said, when all of these things that Jesus promised came to pass. And then Peter said to them, repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 39. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will go upon. Let's dig in and pray. Father, today we thank you for your word. And everybody here, dear Lord, I believe you want to take us from where we are and take us, draw us into you, into more. And the way we see that is through your scriptures. And I pray that the scriptures be anointed, dear God, because I know I can't do it, Lord. But I just pray you convey how much power and how much love you have for us as a people and here in this building in Russell, Kentucky today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I was, I, I've done this in the past. I won't do this. I didn't decide not to do this today because of the cumber cumbersomeness of it. But when I get a, a, a drink, you, you know, when I go to the restaurant, you go there too. You go to the fast food. Sometimes other places they'll have the drink dispenser, right? I like, I've been, because of mine, as, as we talked about last week, I've been eating a lot of Subway. Subway has been in my life a lot more for obvious reasons. Trying to cut back just a little bit, but they have the drink dispenser here in Russellville, and I'll stick it up there. And when I fill it up and I get my drink, those drinks are not necessarily cheap, right? So when I stick that up there, I don't fill it halfway up. Oh, no. Right, no. Right. I fill it up, I stick that, and it comes out, and it overflows, right? And it overflows. And then sometimes if I'm having, if I have a to-go sub, I'll stick that in there and drink it all up. And I'll stick it in again and overflow it again and drink some more. Because I'm thirsty. I'm a thirsty guy, right? So I, I don't fill it up halfway. And what my encouragement to us today is, in my testimony, and I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony today, and maybe it'll encourage you. I'm thankful that the Lord doesn't just stop with us halfway. Full a. Amen. He will take us all the way. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said, yeah, you know, I've got good stuff for you, but you need to wait and hang out because there's more for you first. Amen. I want to give you more and encourage you so that then you can bless somebody else. And so and he told them that, hey, I've got, a, I've got an immersion I want to give you and bless you with. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. And I, I, I just want to encourage us. And they're talking today about the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? He is the third person of the Trinity. He is God. He... he in every way is God, but his role is, in, among many other things, is to draw us in to that more that the Lord has yes. for us. Mm -hmm. And if you go and look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, and if you would mind put that back up for us, sister, we realize we need the power of the Holy Spirit to come in, to bring us in, to lead us on. And I'm thankful today that I serve a God who loves me. I serve a God who loved me enough to give me everything 
everything that I need to oh, yes. further and yes. deeper in him. Yes. And so I, I serve a God today who didn't leave me where he found me, but took me to know him. And when I see this verse up here, Peter said to them, repent. Oh, I see the love of the Savior in that verse. How that we have, as we've talked about uh, on Sunday and just actually this past Wednesday, we shared with us how when we turn to the Lord in confession and repentance, He doesn't leave us where we are. Right. But oh, He forgives us. Oh, yeah. He saves us, the Bible says. Yes. Converts us. Sanctifies us. Liberates us. And all the other good words that you can think of. And I want to drive that home in my testimony. I know what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. I know how real He's Amen. been to me. Yeah. And I just want to encourage all of us, if there's any that are struggling with doubts, any that are struggling, He's real. Keep on believing. Keep doing what the Scriptures say. Be obedient. It says to be baptized. Keep seeking more. And, and, and He will take you great places. I, I do want to share this. I was a little boy at a church in a town called Trenton, Kentucky, many years ago. And I knew what my parents had told me, even though I didn't understand all the ins and outs. But I knew that there was a God. And I knew that there was also something down below. And I didn't want to go there. And I remember the evangelist preaching. That. It was a Sunday evening. I remember he preached. I don't remember a word he said. I don't remember the direction he went. But I just knew that the Lord was tugging on my heart. And he didn't leave me where he found me. And he called me to repent that yes. night. He called me to go down to an, an old altar prayer. That evangelist, they asked me, do you, do you understand and do you believe? And I was able to say I did not by my own power, but because the Lord helped me and Amen. ministered to me. Right. He helped Amen. me to do this and follow yes. through with this. Amen. And I'm thankful that that time long ago for so many that my parents had me in church, that that brother was willing to preach the yes. word. And also, what I want to thank the Lord Jesus that he didn't leave me alone. Amen. Amen. He's saved. Yes. He's saved. And that's what he said here. He says, repent. When, when our hearts are cut, as it says in the book of Acts, they were in a verse we didn't read. It says our hearts are cut. I'm thankful he doesn't leave us there, but he takes us further. The Holy Amen. Spirit draws us yes. on. And it didn't stop there for me. And I'm thankful. When we get, come to the Lord and say, I want to be saved, he not only saves us, but he's willing to take us further into what he's already given us. That's right. Which if you, yeah. it's hard to explain that. That's, it doesn't make sense if you just listen to it. But all the blessings, all the, Amen. the, the sanctification, which means being set apart, all that he blesses us and draws us more into that. And so I, I'm leading up to something here for us because I believe the Lord wants to take us further. Not because he wants to force it or ram it down our throats, but he gives us opportunities. He gives us ways to be saved. He gives us ways to grow and minister and receive deliverance and healing. Has anybody been saved in the house? Has anybody been delivered in the house? Healed in the house? And that's for us. He has that. He has that and so much more wherever we are today. And so I'm just sharing from my heart because I want to encourage us here because I believe that if we're willing to go where the Lord takes us and seek Him will not be the same and it will change our life Amen. only for right. the good only for the good Thank you, Jesus. so the reason I mentioned about the cups overflowing is I'm thankful the Lord saves but He wants us to overflow oh. Amen. that doesn't necessarily happen when we get saved sometimes we have to see a little bit more happen for us we have to dig in just a little further and so I could probably talk on the subject I have here for a long time and thankfully, uh, for, for us, we're going we're gonna to sum it down. But it is, it's to sum it up here. This is tax season, if you don't know. And my brother, sitting in the back, I'll point him out again. He is our tax man. He's where he works on a lot of taxes. And uh, he's, he's done some good work for me in the past, done some good work for, for several. And right now, he's in a big hustle trying to get everybody done because the deadline's tomorrow, right? So if he knows, and the reason I say that is if he knows a legal, legal way that you can save thousands, a lot of money on your taxes, and he doesn't tell you about it, that's malpractice. That ain't right, is it? Right. It's not right for him to hold back. And the same thing is true. If I know something good for you, if I know about this salvation and this infilling of the Holy Ghost, and I don't share it with you, it's not right. That's right. I have Amen. to share that in Amen. love. That there's an opportunity Amen. for us to go deeper, an opportunity Amen. for us to go further. And that if you know, if you don't know Jesus today, there's an opportunity for you. That's if you right. do know Jesus today, there's an opportunity for you. Yeah, man. Don't stop where you are exactly. for us to go yes. further. And so we're talking today about true riches, not just the some money that we're saving uh, 
out there that eventually we're going to spend it anyway, right? But there's true riches. The Bible says where nothing can come and steal it, nothing can Amen. come and take it away yes. because he's got it for us. Amen. And so this has changed my life. And so I want to talk just for a few moments about this and, and what the Lord has done. And so um, we mentioned here in Acts 2, in verse 38, it says, You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it says the promise is for all who are far off in verse 39. And so many people read the book of Acts and they see the things that happen there. And they almost look at it as like a history. Like I said, that's a really good story, Nathan. That was really neat what they did. But that's not really meant to be read as just a history. It's right. past. It's meant to be read for Amen. us today as, hey, this is the stuff we can still see today. Yes. Go on. Yeah. We are believers yes. in that. But this is not just a uh, just a, a dead text, if you will. This is a living, breathing. God has something Amen. good that he wants to do. Yes. He showed yes. acts he wants to do to us today. And so why do I think that? It says it. And, and in, in this verse, it says the promise is for all who are far off. As many as the Lord can call. So if I'm going to go down through time or go down through space, when and where, there is no limit to the blessing that God wants to give That's right. Amen. you. Amen. Not just the, the holy people or the preachers or the chosen frozen. He has it for you. That's right. Yes. Amen. Everyone. Yes. Right? Yes. Everyone he has something good for. And that's really what we dig in. This is what our church believes. This is what we believe. This is what I believe. Because I know he's done it for me. That's right. He's yes. done it for yes. me. He's taken me deep. Read it me. Oh. So, all believers are entitled to the promise of the Father. And in Acts 1-5, it's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, we do want to preface this. And I told that story about my salvation for this. The Lord has called us to be born again. Amen. Amen. So Amen. He's called us to be saved. So we, want, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. If we need Jesus today, what a good day it is. To Amen. Amen. What a good day it is to know him. If we're, if we're not certain, let me park here for just a second, because this is what Peter told him. If we're not certain where we're going, if we were to go out on that road, busy as it is, and die, or if the Lord were to come back and rapture us, if we don't know that, it's a good day to make it right. Yes. Right. Somebody say it's a good day to make it Amen. right. We need to remember we're not promised the next breath. We're not promised tomorrow. We need to make it right today. Repent. Turn to him. Come to Jesus. He wants to know us more. Amen. So I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But when that's happened for us, the Bible speaks of, of something different, something more. And when we talk about baptism, the Bible describes being baptized in water as well. When you're baptized, the word means, it's a it's a word that they took and, and they translated out, but it basically means you're all the way under. You're dunked under the water. And so, in other words, whenever they would die, this is the word that was used, when they would dye a piece of cloth, they would put it in and they would bring it out. It would be one color, totally a different color when they brought it out. Totally changed. So my point is this. The Lord changes us and takes us and makes us. But it's still a piece of cloth. It's still there, but he changes the color. He changes so much about us, it makes us better. And the Lord Amen. wants to do that for us. He wants to give us good things and good gifts. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. So when we talk about being baptized or full of the Spirit or have the Spirit, it, it's described as this. Why, why would the Lord do this? What, what's the deal? What, what's going on here with this? The Bible says it this way. This is right before Jesus went to heaven again. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be, my, be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and to all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. So when he says that, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, he gives us power and he gives us uh, the ability with that power to witness to somebody. Many of us have been in church and we know we're supposed to do good stuff, right? Yeah. You're supposed to pray and read the Bible and tell others about Jesus and worship and give. You know, we can go through a whole litany of things. But sometimes we have an issue. We just don't have the power to do that. We don't have the power to walk in the gifts that he has for us, the witness that he has for Come us. On. You know, the number one reason why technology doesn't work, and I, it's been a while since I've been heavy. I actually have a minor in that when I went to school, but that was a long time ago. But I think it's still true. You know, the number one reason why things don't work? 
No power. You don't plug it in. People forget to plug in the cables that need to be plugged in where they need to be. Right. Has anybody ever been there? And you don't plug it in and it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. All the good stuff is sitting on that box and that computer or whatever it is now. It all sits there, but it's not going to do one itty bitty bit of good without the power. That's right. He's yes, called us yes. to receive the power that we need exactly. to be able yes. to We do need Amen. to tell people yeah. about Jesus. We do need to encourage folks. But it can't happen without the power. And so the Lord wants to connect us deeper. Fill us up with that power source today. Yes. And so I, I want to encourage us. We have a lot of blessings available. This book is full of promises. That's today. right, man. Oh, it's yeah. full of good yeah. things for us. But to see those opened up in, in a richer way, sometimes we've got to go deeper. Okay. And that's what we encourage us with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we believe this is something the Lord does, separate from salvation. Let's talk about that for a second. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. So this is an experience. It's not the same as getting saved. It happens at some point later. And again, this morning, we're doing a little bit of teaching for us. Uh, it, it, was, it seems to be a need in the congregation right now just to, to dig in and understand. We don't want any confusion, amen? We want us amen. to be clear amen. on where we yes. are and what we, what we believe the scriptures teach. And so we believe that this process I'm talking about is separate from salvation. And the Bible says it this way, and a lot of people came to the Lord, and, and then the, the, the apostles came down to talk to them. It says, now when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, in other words, they'd come to Jesus. They sent Peter and John to them. Verse 15. And who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 16. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. So the church had received the Lord. They come to the Lord, but the Bible says here they needed more, even when they, they, they come to Jesus. They've been saved. And, but the Bible also says here, the apostles said, hey, look what God has done. You remember, look what the Lord has done? Yes. Now, look what he's going to do with them. Let's, let's take yes. them further. And they went on down and encouraged them. Hey, let's lay some hands on them. Pray for them that they might go just a little bit further. And the Lord says, hey, I want to fill them up just like I filled up. Uh, the church, if you're familiar with Acts chapter 2, we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. But I, I do want to say this. This experience for us, we say it's, it's separate from salvation. People can be saved and minister and do many good things that never have what I'm talking about today happen to them. It never does. If you know, is anybody familiar with the name Billy Graham? <laughs> familiar with that name Billy Graham? Billy Graham did amazing things for the Lord. But this particular experience that we're describing... We don't, we don't believe it actually happened to him. And so the, the reason I'm saying this here, we believe that this infilling can allow us to do more. In other words, where I'm at, it will take me further with the Lord when I'm filled with the Spirit. The gifts that you have, it will take you further. If you've had any experience in a Pentecostal church, you probably have heard a little bit about these, these things. And sometimes people, if you're ever like me, I grew up in, in this church, in a, in a Pentecostal church. And you hear it and you think, yeah, that's, uh, you hear about it, and that's a little bit weird, right? And if you ever do, you do. You think about it, oh, that's a little bit weird what's going on, what some of these people are doing, right? And so it's like the Lord doesn't want to make you weird per se, okay? I just want to stop and say that for us for just a minute. The Lord wants to make us better. Amen. He wants to take who you are, all the gifts and talents and good things that you have, and with something we're talking about today, he wants to take those and make that Amen. He wants to encourage you for the right. ministry Amen. so that the gifts that you have aren't just left where they are, but are actually developed and blessed. And so we believe that this feeling just allows us to do so much more. And so I just encourage us, if we are saved, we can see more. And, and many people, when they hear about something like this, they seek the Lord for a while, and then maybe they, they give up. Or maybe they seek, and then things happen, and then they don't walk it. I want to encourage us here. Don't give up. If you seek the Lord, the Bible promises us this. He will fill us up. Amen. And it's not going to yeah. be bad. It's not going to be weird. Yeah, there's always there's weird people anywhere you go, right? Yep. But the Lord has for us good. He has to take us deeper. And, and when you get, and I will say this. If we get excited about what the Lord has done, we will get happy sometimes. Amen. And there's yes. a joy that comes with that. So we will be different sometimes. But it's not to be. It's not to be like the weird 
Just keep pressing in. Keep seeking him. And trust him for that. And you say, well, if Billy Graham didn't get it, how can I get it? I want to encourage us with this. Joel, the book of Joel, I didn't have that in my scriptures. But he says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. He wants to pour out and immerse everybody that will. Yeah. It's just whosoever will. It doesn't make us better or special or anything. Like, I, I have my badge. This has happened to me. It's to take us and instead to say, hey, Look what the Lord has done in me. So we can get excited and happy about what God has yes. done in us and not and not hold back. And, it, and it's it's a beautiful thing when the Lord works. It's a beautiful thing when this happens. And I'm I want to talk I'm I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that and testify. But he wants it for everybody. I believe the Lord wants this yes. for us, you and me. <clears throat> Dig in it. So let's seek him. All right. And so Acts chapter two and verse four. And this is teaching today. Those that are with us here. Normally, I, I'm probably a little bit more preachy on Sunday mornings, but sometimes we've got to dig in and do a little teaching too. And, yes. and I want to encourage us here with this. And if you do have some questions about this and say, I don't know about all this, Nathan, that's what I'm here for. Talk to me about it. You know, this is this is what they 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 train me for. I believe this is what the Lord would have for me and just to encourage you with this because I want to see us get everything God has for us. Amen. It's yes. not because we're trying to ram it down yet. It's because we love you and we want to see you grow and we yes. want to see you prosper yes. in every good oh, witness right. that you can oh, yes. So Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes. All right. And in the book of Acts, several places the folks saw the infilling of the Spirit, 120 of them did at Pentecost, and this is what happened. The, the, there are other signs that came down and happened, but this is the sign that they said, and they all spoke in tongues. And so what are tongues? We, we need to talk, because if you hear, ever heard of a Pentecost or anything, you'll probably hear about tongues. You'll hear about yeah. this and hear it described. And it is an unusual way to put it, but we believe that tongues are an unlearned language. Right? I don't I don't study this language that I'm suddenly speaking out. It's something the Lord gives to me instantaneously. Alright? So and again, this is another one where people get kind of a little bit scared. Oh, I don't know about that, Nathan. I just want to encourage us here. He when the Lord does spiritual work, he wants to let us know he's doing that spiritual work. He gives us signs. Alright. You remember Noah? You remember his story? What what was the sign that the world was not going to be flooded again? Rainbow. Rainbow, right? That's a sign. When Abraham received the promise of God, he also had a physical sign, circumcision. If you're familiar with the story of Abraham, and Brother Gary teaches that, he can go way in depth with that. But that's that's a sign that was given between the spiritual between God and us for the spiritual work he was doing. Um, if you look in the scriptures, we talk about Christmas in Isaiah, the sign of Emmanuel. That was a sign the Lord gave. Exactly that. Baptism in water is a sign. Anybody ever read it? And we, we see as a sign of what the Lord has done. The new birth. It's a physical representation of what's going on. Right. Anybody you know, um, know about the end times, right? We talk about that. Anybody read in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13? There are signs that Jesus is coming. Yes. You know what I'm saying? There are physical things that happen to denote something taking place. Yes. As we look at the book of Acts... We see the sign that appears most often when this the, this infilling of spirit comes is speaking in a language, speaking in tongues. It's not the most important sign. It's not the only sign, but it is the first sign that we see that shows us what happened. And so I do want to say this: we many times we can get so focused on this particular thing that we miss the real work that's being done. It's not just to be about tongues. It's a sign for us of what the Holy Spirit has done. So we're not seeking tongues. We're seeking Him. Amen. Does that make sense? So seek the Lord. That's where I'm trying to lead us with this message today. When you seek the Lord, just watch and see what He'll do. If you open your mouth, just watch and see what He'll do to speak through you. It will be, it'll be amazing. I can guarantee you that. If you trust Him, we believe Him for it. He is good to do it. He is good. And so, but we do want to say for us, there's all kinds of good that we want to we want to see happen, but this is one thing that we believe is a, is a sign of the Holy Spirit's coming. And so God will take care of God. Some folks, they believe, and I, there's a whole list of things that people believe about tongues. Some believe, some churches teach you have to be, to be saved, you have to speak in tongues. We don't believe that. 
Some churches believe that for this or that, you know, you've got to you got to be speaking in tongues. They'll coach you even to speak in tongues. We don't believe in that. We believe the Lord will take care of that. Amen. Okay? Amen. And so I, um, and something else, you know, some folks believe in to do a certain ministry that you have to have this happen. We don't believe that. We believe that the Lord can use you in ministry right where you are if you know Jesus. Amen. So okay. Right. So I, I do want to encourage you that, that, that there might have been some confusion that in no way that when we teach this. Is it trying to exclude anybody, right? He wants us all to be ministering and working wherever we are with him. Amen. But this is, I, I share this today because it's an opportunity for each of us to go deeper. If this has happened to you, and this is something that has happened, I believe is in Acts chapter 4. Sometimes the Lord needs to refill us up. Amen. He needs to give us a new purpose right. to what he wants to do, a new uh, bit of power for us. And, and so we, we are called and encouraged to go further. And I could tell testimonies well, again. I've been talking a while, so we I have seen this happen. We would go to services, and many times when I'm talking about this filling of the spirit happens when there are folks gathered together to see it. And I, I, there was a girl; she didn't believe it. What you, you may not believe this either, and she was definitely in your shoes if you don't believe what I'm saying. That she didn't believe it at all, but she was kind of was like, I don't know. Maybe if it is real, we'll see what, what this is about. So we went to a service down in Alabama, and they weren't necessarily teaching everything I'm teaching you. They were just seeking after God and going after Him. And lo and behold, we spent some time. Sometimes it takes some time. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work. But when we do and pray, and pray to Him and seek Him, this girl was never the same. She started speaking in tongues. She started getting excited. She was about as shy as you could believe, but it empowered her. It didn't leave her the same when this happened to her. And so and she was just riding back, and, and there was just a joy in her heart, and I could, we could see it. And so I want to encourage us here. When we're full of the Spirit, I believe it will be an encouragement to everybody around us. And now, because this world out there needs Jesus. Remember, we didn't say it was just so we could wear a tongue badge or a full of the Spirit badge. It's because there's so many people out there lost and need yeah. Jesus and need to be saved. And he wants to use us to do it. He wants to use us right. to go in deep. Amen. Amen. Right. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. He is amazing. He is an amazing God. Amen. And we could go into why he would choose tongues. Why would, why would the Lord even do this? The tongue is the most unruly member of the body, the Bible yes, says. Yes. And so that's why he, he chooses this gift. And so let me read this because it, this can be a little bit of a question that folks have pop up. Because there is, a, there is not only a sign of tongues, there is a gift of tongues. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. All right. So we believe these unlearned languages are not only a sign of the Holy Spirit. They are also a gift that the Lord gives. They are, it's essentially the same. Our church teaches it's essentially the same in essence is what we call it. But there's a different purpose for it. The gift of tongues allows tongues to be spoken in church. And if you read further in this passage in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, you will see that, uh, say, does everybody speak in tongues this way? No, they don't. They don't. Not everybody has the gift of tongues when they speak it in the church. So we don't believe that everybody, and that's not really a way that God has used me, but it's not the same thing as the sign of tongues because the sign is available to all because the Bible says the promises for all who are far off. Remember back in Acts chapter 2. So that's what we believe as, as a church. And so what am I saying? Kind of wind into us here. We want to seek God. And then when we seek God and come to him to speak whatever he gives us, he will give us good things to say. He will give us good things. And today, you, know, you may be listening to me and it may, may not make a whole lot of sense what I'm saying. And that's okay. Because I could talk for probably another good hour and it still may not make sense to you. What really happens is when you see it. And so we're believing by having revivals and other services that the Lord will take care of that and he'll, he'll show you what we're talking about today. And then they'll be like, oh, that's what Nathan was talking about then. Oh, that's what it was. Because if I sit here and teach it, it's one thing. But what I want to do is to lay a foundation. That when you see that happen and it's not just like, oh, that, that guy's crazy. Know that, oh, this is, what, this is what we're talking about here. And hey, maybe I can look for that too in my life. Does that make sense? I'm laying a foundation for us. Even if you don't really understand or even believe what I'm saying, that they'll lay a foundation when the Lord does it. And I'm believing he's going to do good things here in this church. When he does it, we'll be ready to receive it. Yeah. All right. 
So I want to tell you my story because I was, maybe like many of us, I didn't really understand. I didn't understand what all this speaking in tongues and all this being filled with the Spirit was about. I went to a, uh, a youth camp in Louisville, Kentucky. And at that youth camp, this is in 1997, so you know how long ago it was. It tells a little bit about how old I am. A long time ago, and I was up there, and I was away from home. One of the first times in my life I was away, and I was pretty scared. I didn't really know what to, to make of things uh, going up there. But I do know this. God was real up there in that camp. As those kids, we were just middle schoolers, right? We weren't, we weren't old. We didn't have a lot of knowledge about God. But we were just praying, hey, I need God. And the, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. There was a group of them that were fasting. You know what fasting is? Just abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. And the Lord got a hold of me and said, Nathan, you need to join them. It's like, oh, I love my food. If you don't know, I love food. So <laughs> even as a kid, I did. And so it's like, but the Lord got a hold of me. And sometimes the Lord gets a hold of you. You know you need to do something, uh, whether you you know, you really like it or not. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, so yeah, I went that yeah, and yeah. I, I, I spent some time praying with them. And I, don't, I can't describe to you exactly what happened. And then as it, and the, but the Lord began working in my heart. And that evening, with the, and Wednesday night in the Assemblies of God in, in our church where you're, you're sitting in today, you're watching from us with, you know, what they had in the camps that have a Holy Spirit emphasis. So I've been where they talk about the Spirit, and they talked about this same thing I'm sharing with you. And it was just like, I, I don't remember all the, the, the doctrine that was taught, but I remember the Lord was real and the Holy Spirit was real. And when the preacher got done preaching, there was a group of them that came and prayed. And when, I, when they prayed, it was just like, it was unbridled. The, the the whole vocabulary that the Lord had just opened up for me. I just spake what he spoke what he gave me. And it was amazing. I couldn't produce what happened there, but they just prayed and it's just like, whoo. It was just like the freedom and the loosing and the joy that was there in that room for me and many others that night. I can't describe to you. I'm trying to, but I can't. It has to happen to us. And so I and then I was a scared boy going in there, but the Lord didn't leave me the same. And I can't speak for anybody else, but there is zero percent chance I would be standing in front of you if this hadn't happened to me that day in that camp a long time ago. And so I, I said that to say this. I believe the Lord wants to take us deeper. Wherever you are today, He loves you. He loves you so much He sent His Son to die for you, to liberate you, to give you good things and good gifts and to give it to all of us. And if a silly kid in a camp can receive what the Lord has, I know He has it for all of us. Amen. We may not understand all the ins and outs. I still don't understand all the ins and outs. So on this side, I won't. But I will say this. I believe he has something for you if you'll see it. Amen. Amen. Right. I believe he has something deeper. And I, oh, I long to see this in this church. But yeah. more than I ever could, he does. He wants oh, to yes. see you filled. That's he right. wants to see yes, you back in this place. Not yes. to say that when we go out there, because remember, it's to be a witness. That when we go out there, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be lacking in anything. That's the right. Spirit will be That's so full in us. Yes. We'll bubble out with all yes, kinds man. of good. Yes. He loves us that much to give us good gifts. Yes, good gifts for His children. The Bible promises us that. Amen. Yes. It promises us. I encourage us here. I encourage us here. If it's not time for you, if this is not, if you're not ready for you, I pray that, that, that some, at some point you will be. But it's okay. It's okay. But my encouragement to you is, if this is, if you're saying, hmm, I wonder if what Nathan said it might have something, seek him. Go When you go in your car, seek the Lord. Lord, I want more of you. I want more of your spirit. Come to the altar. Spend some time with him. Ask somebody to pray for you. Call him up and say, hey, I want some more of God. Will you pray for me? And I believe that when it's time, when it's ready, the Lord will do what we're talking about here if we believe for it. If we trust him more, he will, he will minister to us and take us in. God promises to fill us. As we said, when we hunger and thirst, we will be filled. Amen. We will be filled. Keep on seeking Him. If this has happened to you, if what we're describing today has happened to you, somebody else needs encouragement in that. Somebody else needs to hear what God has done to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. The next generation needs to hear what your testimony is. Whatever your testimony is, they need to hear that. And I want to encourage us today. This is, this is a good day to see all that God has for us. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. oh, He loves us. Oh, if only my words could convey to you how much the Lord loves and how much good he has for every one of us. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. oh, let's seek him. Let's seek him. And so we'll call whatever music. I don't know what the music plans were for um, 
Did y'all have anything? If you didn't, then just Aaron, just put on something soft for us, if you could, please. You want to put that word? Yes. Wherever you are today, the Lord wants to take you and make you <coughs> closer, better, now, fuller. Oh, yes. He wants to. Yes, yes, yes. He wants to. If you need Jesus today, He's here in the house. Yes, He is. You need, Amen. You need to be filled up so that you overflow. Oh, overflow some more. Jesus. If you just happy, you overflow some more. He is here in the house. Of good yes, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to agree with you. Praise if you need to come to this altar, that's why we have it here. That's why we, we, yes. we, want, we want it here. We want us to seek the Lord. If you have a need, we believe the Holy Spirit gives power to heal. Yes, he, does. Yes. he does. He gives power to heal. He gives power to be delivered. If you're discouraged today, and you're in a place where it's just like, I don't see any hope. I don't see any joy. He's here today. That's why he died for us. I want to pray for us here. Father, I've talked and I've shared what I believe you've given me, Lord. But I, I do want to say this, Lord. It has to be you and your spirit to do the work. You have to do the work, Lord. And I just pray for anyone that needs to receive this, dear God. that nothing, dear God, will, will get away from us. The opportunities that we have. The opportunity to go deeper. If there's anybody that needs Jesus today, because, Lord, it really isn't to be filled with the Spirit just to talk about being filled with the Spirit. We're filled to talk about you, Lord Jesus. And today, Lord, if there's anyone here, I pray you draw them to yourself. If there's anybody that's not where they need to be, I know this wasn't the primary focus of what I said. But if there's anybody that does need to come to the Lord today, it's a good day. If you're out there, we'd love to hear from you on the internet. If there's anybody here in the house and just say, Nathan, I want to make sure that I know that I know that I'm where I need to be with the Lord. Could you raise your hand in the house today? Is there anything? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else in the house? Thank you, Jesus. For those hands that were lifted, Lord, they were lifted to a big God who loved them enough to give their very, the very, very best for them. And I pray in Jesus' name that, that that very thing that they're seeking, that assurance of you, Lord Jesus, that they know you, that that will be theirs today, that they will confess you, confess their sins, and believe your God. And we believe your word says they will be saved. And we thank you, Lord, for how good you are to do it. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody that has an interest, the Bible, we didn't, didn't have time to get, but many times there is a laying on of hands. We'd love to pray for you. If you're interested in receiving more of the Holy Ghost today, if you have a need in your body, and just say, Nathan, I need prayer. I need to stand in for somebody that needs prayer. We invite you to come on down. We invite you to come on down. Get everybody stand in the house if you had the ability to today. Can you give him glory in the house today? He is worthy. He is worthy. We don't understand. I don't understand that he is worthy. I do know that. He is worthy of our very best today. Can you give him glory? And if you have a need in the house, come on down. We'd love to pray with you. He is good to minister in every need. And for those who are watching on the internet, he is good. Receive. We agree with you in Jesus' name. seek it more of the Holy Spirit. And I believe His Word has not changed since the last time we said it. We hunger and thirst after righteousness. What does it say? Before we fell. Anybody that would like to agree with our brother? Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for the victory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You brought him through, dear God. I remember his testimony, dear God, of the tornado, dear God. But I know your board says there's a rushing wind that's even stronger than that. The Bible talks about it in Acts. A rushing wind came in. <laughs> oh, yes. It filled them all where they were. And I just pray that wind come from our brother, dear God. They're right where he is in Jesus' name. That you fill him up. I can't make him. No one should make him. But Lord, you are good to fill him, dear God. And he is he is open to receive, dear God, all kinds of good. And 
and your word says you know how to give good gifts to your children, Lord. How much more will the Holy Spirit? How much more will the Holy Spirit? Just like we know how to give those gifts. How much more will the Holy Spirit give us good things? And we just invite you for our brother. He's seeking you, Lord. Fill him up. From the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, that he might be full of the Spirit. Oh, Lord, that you open his mouth to proclaim, dear God, all the wonders of the Lord. Just as they did on that day, dear God. Lord, they prophesied. Oh, they gave the gospel, dear God, the power. And yes, they did speak in tongues. And I just pray, dear God, in the way you would speak through our brother, you will speak through him, dear God, and all that he has. As he's seeking you, dear God, he will find, I believe, I, I'm confident, dear God. Brother Terry, can I just encourage you to praise him? Can we just, just lift our hands to the Lord and just praise him? Oh, praise him. Take us, dear God. Have your way at liberty in us, dear God. If this is real, and I believe with all my heart it is, take us today, dear God. Take us deeper, Jesus. Take us any more. We want more of you, dear God. Not for us, but for you, Lord. For your glory, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we believe. We believe, Jesus. Oh, deeper, dear God. Take us. Oh, open our mouths to proclaim wonders we never knew. Open our hearts to receive the good that you have for us, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all those who are out there, we encourage you just to be praying. Just seeking the Lord today. When we seek Him, He gives us all kinds of good. But seek Him, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless our brother, dear Lord. Oh, bless our brother. I believe there is a call on our brother, dear Lord. Oh, so amazing. I don't know that he would believe it right now how amazing it is, Lord. But I just pray he had every good gift to fulfill that, dear God. Everything good that you have for him, dear God. Lord, we love you. Ooh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, for the glory of your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Just keep, let's just keep worshiping him today. If there's anybody else that needs prayer, I just encourage you to keep worshiping, brother. Keep blessing. Keep talking to him. If anybody else needs prayer, we'd love to pray for them too. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Austin, if you can hear us out there, we love you. We love you to agree. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Amen. Austin, we're going to pray for you here. But we're going to believe for good. And Cheyenne yes, stands God. in. Father, you know the needs right now. Spiritual, physical, and financial, dear God, for this family. And we believe for Austin, Cheyenne, and Kinsley. That, Lord, every good gift will be theirs, dear God. Everything they're seeking for right now, dear God, will be theirs. And that the enemy will not hold them back, dear Lord. But they, that we will keep going, dear God. They will keep going towards you, Lord. That they will dig in and see a world in this family, Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, there's so much, sometimes there's so much hurt. There's so much going on in the background, Lord. But Lord, we believe, Jesus, when we seek you, dear God, how good you are to minister not only to all our needs, but to the biggest need in our souls, Lord God. Our need of you, Lord. And I just pray that for this faith in Jesus' name. We agree for Austin that where he's discouraged, you will be the God of encouragement. That where he needs a, a touch, dear God, and a ministry, and an open door, dear God, that you are good to do. Not just for him, but for the glory of your name and to bless somebody else. Encourage Austin, I pray. In Jesus' name. Encourage Cheyenne, I pray. In Jesus' name. As we anoint with oil, dear God, we believe that as a point of contact, dear God, to, that there might be a receiving of you and how good you are. In Jesus' name. We do believe and agree, dear God. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He is good to do. Can we praise him in the house? Amen. Worthy are you, dear God. Oh, we thank you for working in Austin. We thank you for working here, dear God. We never let the same God. We never leave us the same. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Lord, dear God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. When Austin is struggling, dear God. When the temptations are there, dear God. The Lord, you break every chain. You break every chain so that you might be glorified. The chains have to go. Just as they need to act, those chains have to go. They can't hold us down, dear God. But we are a free people, spiritually, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless him. Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Thank you. Keep hanging in Austin. Anybody else? Anybody else need prayer today? Keep seeking Him. Lord, we love you today. How good you are, Jesus. How good you are. How good you are to give us good things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody needs a healer, he's in the house today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, my God is a miracle worker. He is. Yes. The miracle worker is in the house. Yes. The healer is in the house. Yes. The Savior is in the house. Yes. And Lord, God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there's any miracle that's needed in here, yes, God, if there's in any the healing, Lord, if there's any the salvation, Lord, Jesus. if there's any need in this congregation, God, and, and, and it reaches out to our families, God, I claim it in the name of Jesus. Yes. I believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, you're a giver of gifts. Yes, and Lord, you are yes, a great Jesus. miracle worker in our yes, lives. You yes, desire yes. to pour out your blessings on us like we yes, cannot yes. contain. You proved that when you went to Calvary. You proved how much you loved us. God, you proved how much we mean to you. And Lord, we claim complete victory in every life in the name of Jesus yes, by the blood of Calvary. Yes, Jesus. Amen. We agree today in Jesus' name. So Praise. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. Is anyone else today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't remember anything else. Remember, he has more. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You could take the music down if you could, Aaron. If you know this little chorus, it has one word to it. Can you sing it with us? Hallelujah. Praise him today. I am the Lord your God and I gave you my love on Calvary I gave you my best and if you will come to me and if you will seek me my best is still there for you Yes. I will lift you up I will cause you to walk in glorious paths I will pour out blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon you. Yes. <laughs> yes, I desire a people that love me. I desire a people that will praise me. I desire a people that will enter into my presence. Yes. And I call you this day to be that people. I call you this day to be my bride. I call you this day to be my children. Yes. I, I will give you my all. Thank you, Jesus. When times are hard and in, in, in times of trouble, I will always be there with you. 
I will always pour out my spirit upon you. I will bless you. I will give you faith. And I will work every miracle that you need. You are my children. And I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we accept that, dear God, that you have good things for us, and we agree, we agree with your spoken word in Jesus' name. Just for a brief bit of teaching, not everyone that we talk about speaking in tongues, that's what we describe. It's not what everybody will do, not everyone will work in that gift, or, but they, we do believe that the Lord has that as a sign for and so that's the gift. We talk about the gift. That's what we mean. Speaking it out in a congregation is a word of encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Father, I just pray for this congregation. Good things, Lord, as we go from this place. That you will take us further and deeper in your love, in your spirit. That, Lord, as, as folks seek you, dear God, in different ways, they will find you. In their time of need, dear God, whatever they're needing, Lord, as they seek you, dear God, you will give them all manner of good. As they go, as we go from this place, I pray, protect us, guard us every mile of the way, dear God, until we see each other again. We love you for it. And we pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. And we love you today. He is good. Amen. 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 So for those out there, God bless you. We love you.